I want to talk about Dave Chappelle at the top. You always do. Always. always. Every pod. He turned down $50 million, the most famous story in entertainment. At the height of his popularity, he left Hollywood. He went on the other side of the world and just laid low for a long ass time. But the crazy thing, the, the important thing about that story to me is what he's been like since he's come back. I don't think I've ever seen him more grounded, more oozing with the sense of purpose and, and just deeply connected to his roots and his meaning and like what he wants out of his life. And the reason why I bring that up is because I think it's easy to get distracted by, you know, success and financial success, monetary stuff is the biggest thing, popularity, fame. But I think it's really important before those things happen, if you get the opportunity to figure out why you're doing what you're doing before those things come into your life, I think you'll be able to handle it way better. It'll end up giving you a lot more longevity. And most importantly, you're going to feel, you're going to just be happier with your life. Because sometimes people will get success, they'll get the fame, they'll get everything that you're supposed to want, and and they'll achieve it even at a young age. But that's where, you know, your life can take a turn, because you're not connected to a deeper sense of purpose, as opposed if you're always chasing the flashy numbers and views and money or whatever, it's like this never ending pit, you're trying to fill. And ultimately, I mean, it's not sustainable. Even the biggest stars, there's always hills and valleys and peaks and whatever. And so, yeah, I wanted to bring that up because I think it's important that we figure out, you know, why we're doing what we're doing. I want to ask you, why do you want to be an actor? Yeah. Well, actually, dude, no, that's a wonderful point. I wanted to ask more specific about the Dave Chappelle stuff too, but um, it does make me think about like, uh I, I had an audition yesterday like a big audition and i worked with a new coach on it and i i you know i thought it like i did some really solid work and stuff and like we were doing really good and then my mom had her friend look at it who's another coach and you know love her but she she's like oh no 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 like it was clearly off like you should be doing this other stuff and i heard that and i was like hey man you know she wants me to work with her so maybe she's more inclined to knock this right but secondly like fuck like it just it was not fun to hear that and it always you know what other people feel is valid like when i hear like big actors say like they're scared of acting when you have a bad thing and i can imagine it's probably the exact same feeling when you have a bad review or anything too you're just like i feel further away from my dream my goal yeah and because you don't just feel like it's like uh, a bad take or whatever you you feel like in that moment like well is it even possible for me to be good and right as much as like as much as you can like say otherwise it does feel like that now i'm very fortunate that i think just like in life i've taken like my mindfulness very seriously the last couple of years and so i i just love the little reminders for myself of like well a remind yourself of other times where you've succeeded on a big level which I have and remind myself of that. And then, you know, and I, and I tell myself that time heals, like it does. People say don't overthink stuff and like, stop thinking about it. But the most refreshing thing I've heard about with that is that just because you stop thinking about something doesn't mean it's not going to pop back in your, it pops back in your head. So the most important thing to me is like, just let time go by, let time heal and try not to think about it. That's the key, but don't be mad that you like, that it keeps popping in your head because we're so used to hearing everyone after the audition or a big interview and they, they, they blew it and they're just repeating it over their head over and over. And it's, that's not bad. It's just, anyway. So uh, why do, why do I want to be an actor? Is that because I've already, I've already committed to it. And I think because it's a, it was a dream in my heart at one point and I, I keep having that dream and you I know think- why it was a dream for you. I do. I do. Uh, 
because I think the main thing that I love is creating with people something great and then seeing people entertained or learn something about that, learn a little bit more about you, your voice through that. I love that about all creative things, my clothing company too and stuff, writing, mm -hmm. everything. They get to know you through that, seeing your work. And then when you participate in it, you're the actor in it and people see that in you, it's like incredible you know yeah um, and the actual bit of acting 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 can be so fun like nailing a scene you know doing something with it the actual act of acting is really cool too uh then you get to meet all these incredible people and stuff i think it's a i think it's the right thing for me but you just you know it's not without its uh, annoyances yeah but also nothing in life is like there's there's a quote i forget what exactly like the wording is but it's something like you got to like pick your pile of shit because like yeah. everything has an element of that regardless of what you do it's never once you get into the thing it's never as glamorous or dope as it looked like on the outside but i want to touch on what you said about like someone else's opinion kind of affecting how you feel about it and you know this stuff is so subjective that's one of the most difficult things about it because like you want to feel like there's some kind of ladder or at least I'll speak for myself. I want to feel like there's some kind of ladder or like I'm making progress in this area or I feel like I'm getting better with these things. And sometimes you set out with the best intentions, but it's not received well. And so it's like, you don't know, you can't really tell if it's tangibly good. But what's crazy is, bro, like the more successful you become at this on your end and on my end, the more opinions you're going to get and the more hate you're going to get too. So it's good you're getting a dose of that now because you got to figure out how to, and I know, bro, you're great at managing all that shit, but like, you know, you're human. We're all human. So it's like just figuring out how to mitigate that at this stage is important. And the act of mitigating it is like, I don't think I'll ever be exempt from the feelings, but I think like being open about it with other people and trying to get better at handling it, managing it well hmm. is what matters to me it's like keeping that as a priority and so like i genuinely tell myself like in any other category okay well don't be don't be a, a victim figure out how to like get on with your life and am i consistent everything else in life i tell myself don't let anything become an idol don't let anything over consume me and that goes for my acting too you know i gotta like believe what i tell people and stuff so it's like truly recognize that this like time will heal and then you just laugh my way through it but the reality you know your specific individual instance should feel so different because it's like oh this one i know the casting director really well and I was so excited to like crush this i felt like everything was gonna be good for this and as funny as it is like as important as this felt other people have so much more importance in, in their things too. I'm sure people have the same feeling, but in front of Steven Spielberg and yeah, there's every reason under the sun to feel like that's the most important thing ever. So if you mess up, that's like the worst thing ever. So my point is it's all relative and I just want to get really good at practicing the act of riding the lows and highs. Well, better. Than better. Same. But at the same time, you felt like you crushed it until you heard this opinion from this one person, right? Yeah. Like actually go back because now, now your opinion of it is it's like muddied because of it. You know what I mean? So I want you to take me back to like, yeah. I appreciate I appreciate you taking interest for one, but two, like this is I, we're kind of unpacking why you know people get depressed about this stuff and why it's such an anxious thing. I felt like what that person said did touch on things that I was actually thinking about it, but I didn't openly say. And so that was just like, when I heard that, I was just like, uh, and I've heard like pro athletes say, you know, when they get like trolled on Instagram and stuff, it's like some 13 year old kid touched on something that like no one knew about them. And they literally, they're like, Oh my gosh, that kid knows my darkest secrets. What I think about myself. So it's like, that has to be okay for that stuff to happen. And you got to be strong. Like for sure, it, bro. it just doesn't matter that much. Like you win some, you lose some. I think 
you know, hopefully for me, fortunately, I have kind of like a deep, you know, spiritual hope in life that it's all going to work out and stuff. And yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, yeah, dude, even like, because from a views perspective too, and I don't want to focus there because I think it's more important that you feel like you're getting better and you're like growing in areas and stuff. But it's like, even when I was on YouTube making shorts consistently, it's like you want this upward trajectory of like, oh, I hit 100K this week. Next week, I'm going to hit 150, then 200. That's what you want. But the reality of that, it mimics life because it's just very much this, you know? Mm. And we all feel like we're exempt. It's like, oh, that ride. Yeah, from, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm the like, genius. That... Once I'm on the ride up, like it's it's going to be different. It's always going to be up. Right. And what you're saying about the time thing too, I relate to that because I kind of, I mean, it's the same kind of feeling of, you know, I can put, if I'm riding a low where something's not performing as well as I wanted it to, or like a script's not coming along or whatever, I can put myself in the mindset of like, if in two months, like I get a feature set up, that's really dope. And I really execute on it and it gets a great response. Then that's that reality. And that's a very realistic reality. Like things can shift within a matter of months. And so you feel like this present time of like where you're at, you can feel like it's this permanent space, but it's so fucking fluid and it will be like a distant memory. And we, it's crazy because we feel like like our present time is going to be this like long, like this is where we're at. Yep. But uh-huh. I can put like, there was one, I was at this one event and the speaker said, he was like, yeah, I know like everyone's hyped to be here now, but like in a year or whatever, you won't, it'll be like the most distant memory ever. And you'll only remember that you like attended the thing. And I was like, yeah, that's bullshit. And then now I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking truth. It's like our conversation right now, it's going to be a fucking memory in like two weeks. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like, but all that stuff is important for like maybe helping you get through the moment. It's all like reminders, like, you know, knowing that, Hey, like, I won't even remember this in five years. Will it be important in five years? Absolutely not. And so that, that stuff's all good. I think. And I've gotten also, a bro. Better. Like if you, if she pointed out certain things that are areas of growth, as fucking hard as it, as it is to hear, it's like, I've heard, I heard some critiques about my films that fucking stung, but they stung because they were true. And I was like, well, fuck, like I better not do that shit again. You know? And that, that is why it stings. It's like, you're wondering, Hey, how can I make this better? I'm not really sure. And that's, it hits you even harder, but I think, like you said, if you can take everything with kind of a positive look of like, not try, don't feel bad about it, but like, don't actively like beat yourself up. But if you had to like, through the most positive lens ever, look at what they said, it's like, okay, well, maybe, you know, I can work on that and just put it out there as like an intention. Like, I want to get better with that type of stuff and then see what happens. Life will happen. But also what's the driving factor for once, once you achieve all of your dreams and and goals and ambitions, because that's a reality. Okay. So let's say it's, it's happening. It's going to happen when all that shit happens and you have all the money you need and you're comfortable and all this shit, like what's then going to be the purpose? What's the driving thing? I would, my guess would be, it would be to get better, right. To continue to just master your craft or what's that for you? I fortunately, I think that, you know, we're put on earth for a purpose for per- and we have talents, fortunately, and even if they don't come to you, obviously, like if they don't come to you without effort, I think you got to force yourself to dream big and keep looking for something, keep looking for something that was once in your heart or in your heart and keep going to that next hill. I think we got to keep climbing hills. So like you get the Oscar and then it's like the next day on to the next one, baby. Like it's about the striving. It's about the ride. So would that be for you, like getting the second Oscar, or what's yeah. the next hill after that? Oh, yeah. fucking yeah! As many Oscars as you can yeah. fucking get. You didn't? Did you watch that Shaq documentary? We we talked about. It, I thought. I don't think no. Okay, Shaq, he got his first NBA championship with the Lakers. He looks at his dad. He like brings the championship home, and the dad's like, "I think he threw it on the ground." He's like, "Back to the fucking gym, baby." You're going right back in. He's like, what? Damn, bro. He's now thankful that he had that because 
I think it's a good mindset of it's important to remind yourself to chill too. Like, yeah, like you always feel like you have to push, but then at the same time, yes, create those goals and you got to, I think, keep creating them. I think goals. I are love that. Great. I agree, as- bro. I agree. Cause also ultimately if you're chasing those goals, like let's say you win your Oscar and then you want the next Oscar and you have this project you're really excited about, that's only going to produce incredible work. If you got that kind of mindset where you're like, this is going to be an Oscar worthy performance. You're going to put your all on the line and just continue sure. to have that. And what you said about the Shaq thing, that's like the same story I heard of. I forget which football player, but it was like right after they won, it was some quarterback right after they won the Super Bowl. I they like went to the gym that night. Yeah. And for some people, you have to go to the extreme of it because it's so easy to believe the hype after that. It's so easy to drink the Kool-Aid and think you're the yeah. best. Yeah. And in those moments, we know you have to work harder to stay humble. You actually have to go against it. And like, you're like, okay, I, it's not a, for a lack of joy. Like celebrate, <laughs> enjoy life. But I think there's something good that comes out of a healthy chase mm. and it's, you know, and I'm just preaching the freaking self-help stuff right now, but I think yeah, yeah. I'm fortunate that I know this stuff. Like, I think, um, where's it going to that? Uh, easy to believe the hype. Um, a healthy chase because, ah, anyway, come back to it. I forgot. Yeah, dude. Now's a good time for it, though. I think it's important to to take yourself back. I I uh the reason why I brought this up from the top of like Dave Chappelle is because and thinking about like why do you want what you want and stuff. Like, I love making horror. I love it. I feel like I'm really good at it. I've gotten results from it because I'm good at it. And I wonder if that's all that I need. Do I need a bigger purpose? Like, I'm curious your thoughts on that as, you know, as far as like, do I need to inspire change or like do it for the audience or does it have to be this bigger, grander vision as opposed to just like, I'm good at it and I like doing it? I love the question. And I think I was just talking to my dad about this. It's a question of intention, just like anything else in life. You know, the intentions are the important part. And so, like you said, it's important to nail down what your intentions are with that. And it's okay for those always to be changing. You don't have to have like an answer for it. But for you, I would implore there's one thing. It's like, don't do something just because you're doing the job well. Don't do something. And that's a that's a fine place to start. But don't do it just because you're trying to do the job. Don't do it just because you're trying to entertain the audience. Do it. Because it's getting the best out of you. Mm. Challenge yourself, whether spiritually, whatever, personally say, you know, my boss wants me to do well. My boss might be universal at that point that hired you. But don't just do what's best unto them. Do what's best, you know, to really do your best work. And we can boil down the definition of like what makes a good movie you know, entertaining an audience, making, if it's a horror film, making something as scary as possible. It's like, okay. And then telling a great story, do that to the best of your abilities and keep getting better at that. And then, and then, uh, yeah, I, I mean, for you, bro, I, I wouldn't, for me. So they say like, what's your brand? How do you define yourself? I don't like to define myself in one way. I, if I have to, I'm a man of excellence. I'm a fucking, I'm going to follow my passions. I'm going to follow my love for life and excitement. That's at least a place to start, you know? And so I would implore the same thing to everyone. Like, yes, we have specific interests and that's fantastic. But when the pressure comes to boil it down to one thing, that's great to have the blinders up to do your best work, but then also be open to down the line. You're going to have interests that take you in other directions and do the best at that too. I love that, bro. That's exactly what I needed to hear. And it remind like I instantly thought of Tom Cruise because you can say a lot of shit about Tom Cruise. Like obviously there's a lot, whatever, but yeah. his work, bro, especially recently, and like Maverick and you know, Mission Impossible, 
everything is fucking executed to like the 10th degree. He's really keyed that in. And he has the mission of like doing it all for the audience, which is also great. That's like a bigger sense of purpose. But in doing that, he's firing on every fucking front. That's like his whole life. He didn't go to the Oscars because he was like prepping for a movie. Yeah, I think. I think, first of all, I've seen that interview with Tom Cruise where he's like, I want, he's obviously got very motivated. He's like, I want the most out of everyone I work with. I, that's all I ask for is the, just give me the most you got, which is more to that point. But it's funny. Yeah, like doing the best that you can do and keep doing it, not necessarily for the awards and stuff, but but it is good to celebrate too. That's just my personal feeling. Like I, it's also important to have that scoreboard of like, you know, what you've checked off on your own goals. But then also, I think another reminder is like, don't do it for the, the people's applause. You know, do it for your own applause. Like, you know what you're setting out to do. It's fantastic to have the accolades and people appreciation. But right. genuinely, I've the last couple of years started to try to really build a strong dynamic with myself of like, I know what I'm going for. It might fool everyone else i might have won this award along the way by doing something unintentionally and that's great celebrate you know it's important to live every day as a as a blessing as something fortunate but yeah you know what you want go for it don't stop till you get it Mm -hmm. and uh and keep doing good onto other people i don't think it's just for filmmaking specifically I don't think it's just entertaining the audience. I think from my definition of what stuff I want to make, it's not just indie movies. It's not just feature. It's not just short films. It's not this. It's not that. I want to make good stuff. And to me, good stuff tends to be a riveting story from beginning to end. <laughs> it's pretty simple. But it's subjective. It's subjective. That's the beautiful thing about the artistic stuff is like, yeah, really, it's not curing cancer. We're on a pretty fun one. But it's it's very doable yeah dude taylor swift said that a lot of time her songs her favorite songs don't line up with what is popular yeah that's interesting. And so a lot of this too is like every time like doing your best doing your best and then ultimately it also becomes a numbers game too because you can't all, of, all you have control over is what you're saying is doing your best. And so releasing out into the world, you see, you know, maybe it doesn't have the reaction you wanted, but you did everything you could do. Oh, yeah. And you get better and better with that if you're going according to this path, you know. And I've gotten better at uh, recognizing my definition of like a good job as well. I And we've talked about this. I tell myself artistically when I'm working on something in business as well. Regardless of what the who created it, whether I agree with them or not, when I take something on, whatever the vision is, I boil it down to it. And this has helped me so much creatively because whether it's one line or one scene or an entire movie or whatever, I boil it down and say, whatever the vision is, I'm going to put my entire heart into it and bring it to life in the best possible way. So that make, that gets me off because I used to get so hung up on technique and lines and everything. I was very like just anxious about it creative stuff but now i'm just like i'm going to use any tool whatever but i'm going to go the path of least resistance and i'm going to try to bring this scene to life the best possible way and so yeah oh yeah no yeah yeah it's good shit i also think talking about like boiling down and stuff i think complete focus in order to do your best on a project you have to have like exclusive focus on it and i tend to have i have a lot of like juggling plates and stuff and it's okay to have like a few projects in the roster that you're kind of working on or thinking about or whatever that's cool but once you i think there's nothing stronger than like making a commitment that this is my laser focus this is the one project that i'm gonna put my all into at this given moment because then you're able to put all of your attention on it and that just leads to better results it's more detailed it's more specific you just execute better yeah and speaking of projects yes got a chance to read the Maisie script i have not at all no sorry all good bro man it's i'm telling you it's really fucking good uh ken and i have written like a few scripts together 
yeah. and we've written our own stuff, obviously, but that's one where we came together that we wrote it like, I think like a year ago or something, but it was one of those that we wrote it. We didn't really do anything with it. Oh, the short film a year ago or the feature a year ago? The feature. Okay. I don't know you guys had it. We kind of wrote it like a year ago. We were, you know, we just kind of shelved it away. We did our own stuff, whatever, shorts. And then we revisited it. We revisited it like a couple of months ago and we read it and we're like, this is really fucking good. So that's the first one that we would love to produce. It's very producible. It has like a couple locations. What's the concept? Cast. What's the concept? Yeah. I don't even want to tell you. I just want you to go and fresh and read it. Okay. okay. Awesome. There's like four characters, very small cast, a couple locations. We didn't even really go in with the intention of making it producible at like our budget range. But ultimately, it ended up being like every single thing that you're supposed to do, we ended up doing. So I'm excited about it. Oh, that's great, dude. Okay. Well, yeah, I literally just finished that audition last night. So I, I'll have time. Yeah. As of now, it's just it's just working on getting, you know projects off the ground and getting things financed and like i said like hyper focused on one project and for now bro the thing i mean the thing that's the most ready the thing that's polished the thing that we're really excited about is Maisie. so i'm excited for you to check it out and we would love to get to work on it like i said it's super producible you know so i i'd love to fucking get on this okay yeah i appreciate it man dude let me tell you real quick uh, did i tell you that i got that audition i not to make it about me but... which audition what are you talking about like yeah i don't think i brought this up before so i, I ran into a, a a nice lady at my day job this girl this girl came in and was like oh my gosh my sister cast your cousin in a um in a movie coming up and we hit it off. We're just like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. She's like, I, I got to tell my sister about you, et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out she told her sister about me. And her sister and her daughter are casting directors. And right, she immediately hit me up. And was like, Duke, I have this thing in mind for you. Uh, this movie. Put yourself on tape for it. So I was like, dude, this is such a coincidence. Like, awesome. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then I ran into my dad's friend who happens to be like an acting coach. And he's like, dude, we want to work together sometime. Like, come work with me. And so I did. And I was like, this is all timing wise. I feel like this I'm is a different it. acting coach from the one who made the tape. No, same one. Same one. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I met with him and we worked together and so funny. So he was great. He was, he was honestly like awesome. Um, right down the street for me in person and my dad actually came because they're friends and my dad kind of watched like the first couple of minutes and it's funny like yeah good just a good coach good actor like you just get really i mean you would love this from a directing standpoint too like we just went over the scene together we read it but then also then he starts telling me like kind of referring to me as a character and being like well you know you're you're kind of feeling this way you're kind of feeling that way and it just like drops you more and more into the moment and then you're doing it and it just becomes less the ice keeps breaking and you keep getting mm. more into the psychology of the scene and it's like you know really getting underneath each moment of what's really happening and so that just helped me out so much and best it, coach you've worked with um i'd say ever since that really good acting class that i was in you know for two years or whatever ever since that all my coaches like i won't accept anything less than that like but so they're all you know good at just getting underneath the circumstances right and then what plays the best right and he uh his big thing for me was like you know i had some choices that i started with and it was like okay that's not really working or that's a little just actory let's get into like actually reacting off of these circumstances and stuff and it was fantastic um but uh, it's funny, like I went into it because it was a new experience 
and you're always like, oh shit. Like, I wonder if like, hopefully I don't freeze up and like downward spiral or something mentally. And because sometimes you work with people and like you just can't even communicate, like you're on different wavelengths about the whole thing. But no, I, I, t- I did tell myself, I bring it up because I had some of those self-help reminders of like, compete against yourself from last time. Like, because in those moments, sometimes you think like, do I even want it that bad? And I'm tired and blah, blah, blah. But I told myself like, no, spirit of excellence. Like, don't just do it, you know, because it's the job. Do it to get the best out of you. Like, how'd you do last time? Do better than that. Do better than that. Really take direction. And when he's speaking and giving me advice, giving me tips, direction, I'm thinking like, even if I don't agree with that, I'm like, no, freaking figure out how to do it, how to do it. How can I do it to the best of my abilities? And then I really try. It's just about trying. It is hard to remove that ego from it, right? That's what it is. Well said. It's yeah. removing, submitting to what yeah. Because rec- it's so easy just being a human. That's like the instinctual reaction to any feedback like that. Like, no, especially no, when you're, no. Exactly, bro. Especially when you're being vulnerable with something like acting. Yes. Being yourself, you're showing your emotions. Totally. And then you start to submit and you're really trying. And then next thing you know, you're like having fun. You're like, what? He sees that you're really trying, that you're good to work with. And he even said that. He's like, dude, this is a great sign. I mean, I, I'm having so much fun. And then he's just working and working and working. And then uh, by the end, you're like, dude. I, I had an acting coach a while back before I even felt like I really knew what I was doing. They said, like, it's good as long as you're feeling like you're you're flowing creatively like you're out of your negativity and you're into like oh how can we just make this better right i I think that's a good kind of positive place to start by that by that uh kind of measurement it's definitely good we're definitely creative like you know making as good as we could possibly make it there so what do i have to be pissed about you know that's if i was a director that's a lot of what i'd want from an actor so Actually, bro, that's a great point that you brought up because that is the dynamic between director and actor. And that is where there'd be some resistance there. I have to make the actor feel like it's not like I think you're a shit actor. or I think you're doing a bad job. It's just like, let's collaboratively work on this thing. That's it. I know. I know. I'm glad that you found that guy to drop into it. Yeah. And he's so great. He's my dad's friend. We're, we're meeting next week on another scene he's not even gonna charge me just because he's like dude i think you're gonna book book a series i just think you need some like steady like someone to spar with hell yeah right fucking go someone to spar with what do you mean i mean he didn't say spar but like someone to like vouch for you or what no no no. someone to keep you working on acting material like Mm -hmm. not just like an audition but like it's like meet with someone that's gonna really work with you like make you better once a week like that's what you need and you know most of the time if you're in an acting class there's a bunch of people you don't really get that one-on-one time so it's like this is kind of nice to be able to dude also acting classes are so expensive and being in one and seeing what how little time they get to actually like work on their craft i'm like what the fuck like this is like the biggest waste of money oh totally unless it's like a really good one yeah but that's rare it's rare I don't know. But whenever I talk about acting to you, like when it's good, you're always like, you're like, that does sound sick. Well, I mean, you have this approach to acting and this feeling about it. That's it's no bullshit. It's just like, you're giving me everything that I want as a director. I'm like, let's talk about the circumstance. Yeah. Let's not like have you think about the traumatic moment of your life and then like feel it and then live in it. I'm like, fuck all that shit. Well, dude, my, I might watch this right now. The thing that inspired me to want to be an actor, you brought that up. It's funny. We're circling back to this. Is what, my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies, The Social Network. Yeah. It's all the behind the scenes features of it. And David Fincher, the director, him, the writer, Aaron Sorkin, and then two leading actors, uh, Garfield and, and uh, the guy that played Zuckerberg, they were all in the writer's room together. And they would collaborate about, okay, what really is the motivations of this moment? And Mark Zuckerberg, I mean, you know, he got into Harvard, but then his best friend got into the fraternity and he got cool and he left Zuckerberg behind. And then they let, you know, Andrew Garfield comment on that. And that's all the work that I like to do. It's like getting into the circumstances. Like who gives a shit about actor? They're just the puppets. It's like get into the circumstances and figure out how to do the best impression of that. 
I love that they brought the actor in that conversation too. I know they didn't have to, for sure. Yeah. David Fincher, David Fincher is he pretty much always makes a great movie. Bro, I saw the behind the scenes. I love David Fincher too. We got like 40 seconds. And um, he made this film called The Game that I fucking love, but he did this movie with him. Dylan. Yeah, he made this movie with Jake Gyllenhaal where he had Gyllenhaal throw this stack of papers on this seat and it was just a close-up of the papers. He made him do it like fucking 25 times because it didn't land correctly. 100 takes, yeah. He's one of those anal retentive directors that's just so yeah. fucking specific, but he's great. He's great though. What movie was that, Jake Gyllenhaal? Uh, the one about the uh, serial killer. I forget. No, Nightcrawler? I don't think it was. Nah, look it up. You'll find it. Okay. Bro, yeah. love talking to you. Always. Much love.